Everything in Python is an object. You've probably heard this a hundred times. But let's be honest. What is an object? And what's a class? First, understand this. Object-oriented programming in Python is just a way of writing code that reflects how things work in the real world. In real life, everything has some data, such as a student having a name and age, and everything can perform actions like introducing itself. Oop in Python lets you model that same idea using classes and objects. Let's take a real-world example. Suppose you're a student. So let's define a student class in Python. What are we doing here? We're just designing a student. This class defines what every student will have and what every student can do. But this class is just a blueprint. No actual student exists yet. Now comes the object. What's happening here? Python is using the student class to create a real object named Alex. That object has its own data, which includes name, age, and subject. And it can do something like introducing itself. So an object is a real instance that holds both data and behavior. Let's break down these terms clearly. Class. This is a design or a blueprint. It defines what the object will have and what it can do. Object. This is a real thing created from the class. It holds actual data and can perform actions. Method. A function inside the class. These are the actions that the object can perform. These three things together form the base of OOP. Let's do an autopsy on our object. That's the internal data of the object. Want to see what all it can do? You'll see a long list. And inside that list, you'll also find our custom method introduce. So every object in Python stores its data and its methods. This is not limited to just custom classes. Even built-in types like int, string, and list. They are all objects. Now, if you do, you'll get this error. That's Python saying, x is an object, but it doesn't have a method called upper. In short, everything in Python is an object, but every object has its own set of methods and behavior. Once you get this, you've understood the foundation of Python's OOP. The next step is concepts like inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation, but we'll save those for another video. For now, you're good. If you found this helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more Python goodness. See you in the next one.